Hello and welcome to a special year-end edition of the France 24 debate, one we're calling Return of the Bicycle. Mm -hmm. Parisians didn't wait for December mass transit strikes to get in the saddle. In one year, bike use in the French capital up 54%. The culmination of years of growing restrictions on cars, the introduction of bike sharing services, and most recently the construction of bike lanes across the French capital, just in time for March municipal elections. Incumbent Anne Hidalgo will be vying for another six-year term, which would make her the host mayor for the 2024 Olympics. What kind of city will Paris be when it welcomes the world? And how's it doing on transport and mobility? We'll ask our panel. And about alternatives that include those now ubiquitous electric scooters. We'll also ask about the land of the Tour de France, how it feels about a means of locomotion that's known past glory, bringing workers to the factory, turning professional riders into idle. Yet a land where today's citizens can sometimes seem, well, less in love with the bike than in many of the... Uh, uh, surrounding European nations. What's, is that all now about to change? With us, she's written in the past about uh, the place of taxis in the big city. Marie-Xavier Vauquier chairs the uh, uh, women's uh, professional network Women in Motion, which promotes more gender parity in the transport sector. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. I want to welcome as well uh, Stein van Oosteren, spokesperson for Vélo Ile-de-France, uh, bike Ile de France. Ile de France is the Paris area, an umbrella group that brings together 33 uh, organizations that promote more bike use. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. We welcome back Nicolas Melon of Electric Vehicle Research and Consultants EV Volumes, and who's always thinking about how to make cities smarter. Thanks for joining us. Hi, François. And uh, for all things French, who else to turn to? But Florence Vilmino, co-host of France uh, 24's French Connections. Hey, François. Show. Nice to see you. The France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24debate. Florence, if you build it, they will indeed come. Absolutely, because, of course, the landscape in Paris has really changed over the last couple of years. It's become a lot more bike friendly, all these new bike paths springing out of the ground like mushrooms. So it's really good news if, uh, you know, if you ride a bike in Paris, people love it. People who use their bicycles, people who don't have cards are loving these new bike paths. So you have these, this, you can, you can either go down these uh, paths that are actually separated from the cars that those are the real nice ones because they're safer. You don't have to deal with any kind of traffic, uh, but to make those bike paths, well, they had to make the roads a little shorter. And so Understandably, people who drive cars aren't so thrilled with these this bike boom that we're seeing in Paris. Is that growing pains? Growing pain, perhaps growing pains, because as you will hear, some people are actually dropping their cars for bikes. Take a listen. It's horrible. They're jealous because we go faster than them now. If you don't live in Paris, it's really not funny. It was funny at first, but not anymore. I sold my car and bought a bike because it's unbearable. Driving in Paris is horrible. Un insupportable. It's unbearable to uh, drive a car in Paris. It's ex expensive. You have to pay for parking. So a lot of people think a bike is much simpler. Well, this brings back an old argument, doesn't it? Which is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, city's getting more and more polluted. Um, the municipality had to do something about it. But as you heard that motorist say, it's they feel it's unfair to those who have to come in from the suburbs. Absolutely, because it's true that if you're in Paris, it's definitely easier to get around. But if you're coming in from the suburbs and have to, say, work on the other side of Paris, well, if you don't have a bike, it's still quite complicated to get around. Marie-Xavier mm -hmm. Vauquier, your thoughts on how it's going, this, this transition? Mm. It's, it's been a somewhat painful process. Faux. <laughs> I, I, I used to... to um, so. I got my first bike in 2001 and I kept it. I was living in Paris and working in Paris then. And so I was biking, I think, five kilometers and it was really OK. But uh, when I moved in the suburbs with my family five years ago, then I took my bike only to go to the RR station. And in spring, I, uh, my mayor in my suburb, he made a very nice bike lane, uh, bike lane uh, near the Marne River. And one day I discovered it was possible to bike from where I live to where I work, uh, thanks to Anne Hidalgo for the Paris part. And then it was like, wow, let's do it. And so I bought a nice bike. And then since April, I'm going to work every day, 20 kilometers morning, 20 kilometers on the evening with my bike. And it's, uh, 
It's uh, unbearable uh, to, to think about getting back in the train. A, a normal bike or an electric bike? So it was a normal bike until September. And so in September, thanks to Valérie Pécresse, um, I had the... the president of the, of the greater Paris yeah. region. So I had the opportunity to rent an electric bike uh, for 40 euros per month. And uh, so it's really cheap. And I was wondering with, you know, the weather, the, the, the night, if it would be okay to bike. And with this electrical bike, it's just wonderful because it helps you against the wind and you have a proper light. And so, so then it's okay. There's nothing. Uh, oh, my husband keeps telling me, one day you, you will come back in the train. And I'm mm, why? Why would I? Say, because... Because not, I'm happier outside. So it's, uh, no, the changing are huge, really huge. Nicola, it's a revolution? Well, revolution. I see you rolling your eyes. What's going on here? <laughs> revolution, it's something you know, that people used uh, uh, 60, more than 60 years ago. And before the Second World War, every, everybody would commute by bike because they wouldn't have any car. So, uh, but it's uh, taking some space of from cars is definitely a, a revolution. Uh, but something which is very true is bike, is people don't realize, don't realize how fast it can be because it's actually faster than a car, it's faster than a bus, it's faster than a scooter actually. So it's the fastest mean to travel in the city. Uh, and then of course, it's even better if you have bike lane, if you have place where you're not directly in the car mm. smelling the yeah. pollution. I think today, I, I mean, I recently, uh, uh, you know, I, I take the train to Gare Saint-Lazare and then I, I, I usually take line 13. But it's so crowded. Line 13 and is the metro. Mm. Line 13, the metro, the and the experience is very bad in the morning, so I decided to bike and take a Vélib. Mm. And it's Vélib so or the nice. bike shares that we have. The bike sharing, and it's so nice. I just have to cross the scene. It takes me uh, less than 15 minutes, so it's just even faster than line 13, and it's a, a nice experience to start your morning. And much better than the 913, actually. Mm -mm. Yeah, but what if it rains? And well, what if it rains? When it rains, you can take the 913. Uh, <laughs> and but it, you know, it's not. Uh, it is not very often that it rains. And and the rain argument, you have to see that northern to France, where they have more rain than us, they take the bag much more than we do. So I'm not sure it it's, mm. it's, it's, it 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 works. Mm. All right. There's no bad weather. There's only people and un people under equipped. Uh, yeah, uh, well, as, as an avid biker, I would say this. There's the problem of the wind as well, but that's a different story. Uh, the, 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 let's talk about these bike lanes that Florence was mentioning here, because Jacques Chirac was still the mayor of Paris when politicians first started promising bike lanes in the capital. Mm. Now, the numbers have now shot up dramatically. Uh, is, it, is it where you'd like it to be? This, this, is, a, this is an idea that... Um, that uh, advocacy groups have. You saw that first graph there. This is this is the one of uh, of uh, the bike lanes as they are right now. If we go back to that first graph, uh, Stein von Oster, and it's one yes. that you're advocating for. Uh, the the this is the type of bike lanes you would like to see all around the Paris area. Yeah, what you saw on the first graph was uh, the red lines. Is the the rev? It's the Réseau Express Vélo. It's a it's a few lines. It's only four uh, bike lanes that go through Paris from north to south and from east to west. And what you see there is the same thing, but for the whole region of uh, Paris, the Paris region. So the idea of uh, all these bicycle associations in and around Paris is to create a bicycle network that would put every one of the 12 million inhabitants of the Paris region at a couple of kilometers, at a couple of minutes of biking from this bicycle network so that they can, as you just said, discover this wow experience. Hey, I have a network, another transportation system mm. that can take me somewhere. Because yeah. very often people in France, they uh, see the bicycle as um, uh, a toy or something mm. that you uh, do when you're on vacation, uh, but not as a means of transportation. It's because there's no network where they can feel safe, mm. where they can drive. Why is that? Why is there no network? There are many reasons uh, for that. Um, I think that the car lobby is uh, the oil lobby is uh, is an important reason uh, for that. Um, we think there's people who actively are trying to stymie this idea. That absolutely, are, uh, even was, today. Absolutely, absolutely, Abs absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knock on the door of the politicians and they really say that, hey, if you promote this 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 bicycle thing more, I'm going to kill you politically. That's 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 what happens. And you have examples of that. Yes, I mean, uh, if you read. Uh, the, the, the Liberation, a newspaper, and what was 
uh, what, what Daniel Ego, uh, the mayor of Paris, explained, uh, the, the words that were, that were spoken to her, I mean, it's exactly that. I mean, I have the quotes. Uh, they're in the newspapers, and that's how it happens. And if you look at the oil industry, for example, they, I think the five biggest oil companies in the world, they pay something like $200 million uh, a year to, to kill climate policies, meaning bicycle policies. They will do everything to keep, to, to, to keep uh, governments from promoting clean ways of producing, of developing, of uh, transporting people. Marie-Xavier uh, Vauquier, you agree with that assessment? I, I would feel like to, to agree, yes. Because it, it's, uh, it's clear that um, um, there is this, this idea that uh, the car are liberty. And so if you listen to uh, last week, uh, uh, the beginning of December, there was an, uh, a whole day about uh, um, um, cars in the, the uh, Bercy uh, with uh, Bruno Le Maire. And Bruno Le Maire was saying to so our Minister of uh, Economy, and he was saying that uh, car is liberty, blah, 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 mm -hmm. and what we, would, we do with car, etc. And everybody around was like, hey, hello. Hello, wake up, climate change, blah, blah, blah. You have to do something to help people to go in another way. And especially for women, because women are in the public transport. And so that's why we are uh, doing this, what we're doing with the Femme en Mouvement. It's to explain that you have to think about the mobility of women. And women, sometimes they go with cars, but they would prefer to go with bike or with public transport because uh, it's something that they really need. And so, so yes, the, the car industry in France is really powerful. Nicolas Menon. Oh, I was actually there, actually. Mm. And then <coughs> it's true that uh, Bruno Le Maire said uh, we should not refrain the use of car at, you know, in, any, in any way. And then he compared the, the restriction of the use of car to the Soviet Union. Mm. That's what he sold. Uh, and it's true that it's not a, it's not a good signal. I would confirm that mm. Anne Hidalgo had a lot of pressure and a lot of difficulties to put the bike lanes uh, in place. So it, you have to have a strong uh, will, uh, political will to implement those things. Uh, and you have to remember that after the, the, the First World War, when the cars arrived first, they get rid of all the tramways, of everything, and they clean just to leave the space for cars. Paris, uh, it's interesting because in 2000, they start to take some space from cars with the bus lanes, which um, can be used with bike, but it's not mm. that safe. Uh, and that's the only way, uh, that's the only measure that uh, we can do is in, in France is, is how you say, how to bother, uh, how to uh, make cars uh, unbearable. That works very well. That's why this guy mm -hmm. uh, took a bike instead of this car. But we shouldn't forget about the people who have no alternative. And that's also the problem, mm -hmm. because not everybody lives in Paris or not everybody has mm -hmm. a, a bike lane. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing that people have been talking a lot for a long time, but is not there yet, is those big parking spaces for mm -hmm. cars at the door of Paris that you need so people have an alternative to come. and. People that just don't like to take their car and drive in Paris, they just have no choice. Yeah, there's, there's no a, a park and ride uh, uh, system like you have in, in, in other countries. And what's true for cars is also true for bikes. When the Dutch city of Utrecht hosted the start of the 2015 Tour de France, it was a nod to its uh, trailblazing view to bike lanes and paths. This is from uh, the city's website, and it touts new parking garages uh, for for bicycles, uh, uh, that are kind of nifty if you if you if if you if you look at them, do you get the sense that because here we're, we're we're touting this new revolution that's coming to the French capital? It's coming. Is Paris ready for this? Do, are they have they planned ahead? Have they planned enough parking spaces for the bicycles? It's coming. It's coming, and it will come because people want it. People they are sick of uh, sitting in uh, traffic jams. They are sick of uh, breathing smog. We know it. France has even been convicted for that by the European Court of Justice. I mean, the air that we breathe is very uh, bad. But most of all, people are sick of having trouble just getting to from A to B. I mean, it is how, how difficult should it be to just go from one city to the next? Paris in the morning and noon and, and, and late hours, it, it is a traffic jam. And human beings, they have a, a, an incredible capacity to, to cope with suffering. But this limit is starting to get to an, to an extreme. And I give, give you one example. Uh, it was uh, some months ago, there was a bus driver who actually killed a car driver right in front of him. He just crushed the car because the discussion got so heated. 
I mean, when these things start happening, that really means that something is going out of control. And uh, the, the, I think that the bicycle associations, and I also like to quote the, uh, the National Federation, the FUB of uh, bicycle associations, they're really organizing that negative energy in positive energy. And that positive energy is creating not just little pieces of uh, bicycle paths here and there, but a network. And what you see is that as soon as you create a network, then just like you said, everybody starts arriving on it. Do you get the sense that there's a change? There is, it does seem like there's a cultural change. I know that like people my generation say, we, I mean, if we live in Paris, it's a very different story if you live outside of Paris, but people who live in Paris, nobody owns a car anymore, which was a very different story, say 10, 15 years ago. Why? Because it's expensive. You have to pay for parking. You have to uh, you know, pay for the upkeep of your car. And it's just really complicated to get around the, the city these days. If you're in your car, you have to find parking once you get to the place. Uh, everything has been put in place to make it very difficult to, to drive around in a car. So my few friends who, who were diehard car drivers, I can't say a single friend of mine in Paris owns a car today. It's very wow. different if you're talking about people who live outside of Paris because, the, you know, it, but it's the same thing. In Paris, transport is very good. Uh, but once you get outside of Paris, the metro system doesn't work as well. I mean, or it's more, it's further and further apart, so it's 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 harder to get to get the metro. We're kind of spoiled in Paris with with transport or with bike lanes. It's very easy to get around. But if you're living outside of Paris, it's a very different story. That's why there's this plan for the Grand Paris, which is the which is the big network that they're they're trying to extend the metro. You say the yellow vest was a blessing in the sense that it's a it's it's something that concentrated the minds on that issue specifically of. Mm getting those who are further away from uh, from public transport hubs uh, into, in, onto the grid? It, I think it, it was part of that. It kind of brought it to the national consciousness. But but way before the yellow vest, people were already saying, if you live in the banlieue, which is you know outside of Paris, it's a lot harder to get around than people inside Paris. All right, we're going to pick up on these points and more when we come back. You're watching a special year end edition of the France 24 debate. Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us for a special year-end edition of the France 24 debate. We're watching the quiet, or not-so-quiet revolution, if you will, of the bicycle, the return of the bicycle we're talking about with Marie-Xavier Vauquier, who chairs uh, the uh, Women's Professional Network Women in Motion, Femme en Mouvement. Welcome back uh, as well to Stein van Osteren, spokesperson for Vélo Ile-de-France. Ile-de-France, the Paris area, an umbrella group that brings together uh, advocacy groups that uh, like the bike, and we're with as well uh, Nicolas Melon, who uh, is uh, with uh, electric vehicle researchers and consultants EV Volumes, and France 24 is uh, a very own Florence Villeminot of French Connections fame, our, our show that looks at uh, all things French and at cultural and social mores uh, in this country. We talked about Utrecht before the break, uh, hosting the start of the Tour de France. The French were impressed by the size of the crowds there, and also the following year, in 2015, Yorkshire, uh, then London, hosted the first stages uh, of the Tour de France, of France's iconic bike race. And I've got to say, um, Stein van Osteren, mm -hmm. yes. when we French people saw the crowds on the side of the road, in the Netherlands, uh, in in, uh, in in the UK, there was we were impressed and at the same time wondering why are we not as enthusiastic as they are? It's this is our this is our sport after all. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> when I see you know, um, for me the bicycle. Yeah, I'm a Dutch person. I immigrated to France, so I'm half Dutch, half France. But I grew up in in, in the Dutch way of living with a bike. And the bicycle is not a sport for me. So that is not my world. What we see on those, on those images is not my world. I'm not really uh, very much interested in it. I'm not really following it. Uh, it's, um, for me, it's, it's, just a, it's just a tool that you use to go from, from A to B. So and if, you, I think, see, if and you see Dutch great Job Zotemelk on TV, yeah, you're not that interested. It doesn't maybe just because it's Job Zotemelk or just because it's some uh, special championships, but really that's all. It's not something that that we're uh, that we're following. Uh, I think that that is actually part of the let's say the reasons why uh, it's so difficult to make uh, the the bike de uh, develop in France because because of the Tour de France, it helped the bike uh, to 
become uh, developed. But it also uh, imprinted this image of the bike as a sport in the minds of people. But for me, it's not a sport, but a transport. And that is what makes it uh, different. And I think that that image is now starting to change. Yeah. But, uh, do you agree with that, Marie-Xavier Vauquier, that yes, actually the Tour de France I, is a hindrance rather than a help? Uh, in I, I think it's... Uh, it, it, Maybe some people are thinking that if you want to get a bike, it's, it will be expensive. You will have a special outfit, etc. When actually a bike is really cheap and uh, you don't need anything special to, to use it, uh, I mean, uh, like nine months of the year. And so, yes, I, I'm not... I, I have to say that uh, for me, Tour de France is like a boring afternoon when I was a kid. <laughs> But oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Mm. Yes, people because still, still, I mean, people associate it with that. I'm with deflated. Time. I'm deflated by yeah. that. But comment. it's still it's still very popular. I mean, it is the third most yeah. watched uh, sporting event yeah. after the uh, the Olympics and the and, the, and yeah. the World Cup. I think the reason why there's been this désamour, this falling out of yeah. love with uh, for French people with the the Tour de France, has to do with all the doping scandals as yes, well. Exactly. Or maybe that the French haven't won since mm. 19. And also the French teams <laughs> they are not as good <laughs> as they used <laughs> to be. But there still is a lot of nostalgia for the for the for the Tour de France, mm. and if ever you mm. are in France and are lucky mm. enough to go along the side mm. of the road and watch it, mm. there's still a lot of enthusiasm for it. All right, back yeah. in November, France mourned uh, Raymond Poulidor, the greatest rider never to win the Tour de France, mm. eight times on the podium. Never did he beat five times winners uh, Jacques Anquetil and Eddie Merckx. He was an idol and an example, a great example. He had so much willpower, one that you need in cycling. That's, uh, that's how things are. Nicolas Melo, uh, to explain to people who aren't French the, the love with, with Raymond Poulidor, does that tell you a story about France and the bicycle or just tell you a story about the mentality of the French? Well, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be very honest, I'm a bit young or not old enough to, to love Raymond Polidor. I, I didn't uh, know him by the time. But I, I would just, on, on the Tour de France, I wanted to say that I, I disagree. It's actually even part of the problem. Because I'd rather see, I mean, what happens recently with electric bike is a revolution. Because when you have electric bikes, much more people can do bikes. They can travel much longer. I'll give an example of my grand aunt, and she had to stop bike. She was 75 and then she got an electric bike. So rather than seeing a Tour de France, I'd rather see old guys driving electric bike so everybody can see that mm. they could do it. Because when they see somebody on the Tour de France, mm. it's, it's not for me, mm. I'm not fit, I'm not this kind of mm. things. And it's actually, it's the other way around. And today, electric bikes make things much more um, accessible and even you can travel, go to work, not arrive sweating, etc., mm. which is a big hindrance and to, to bike. So, um, I mean, Tour de France is part of the culture in France, but I would say uh, we need also some picture of old guys mm -hmm. on electric bikes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should have an electric Tour de France that would maybe get yeah. more Kind of, kind of like the e Only for Formula 65. E that they yeah, have yeah, for, yeah. for, for yeah, motorsports. Yeah, 65 plus. Uh, in, yeah. <laughs> instead of an electrical Tour de France, you, you should get some bonus for taking your bike. I mean, for, for me, for example, I have absolutely no bonus for using a, a simple, easy, uh, cheap on energy uh, way to move. Well, uh, uh, well, let me ask you about this, because last year they, all, they talked about a subsidy uh, yes, for, for, the, for buying electric bikes, which are still very expensive. Why not a subsidy for bikes that don't have a battery? Even wouldn't that be even more eco-friendly? Yeah, yes, it would be exactly. But uh, nowadays, the, 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 uh, once I, I wrote a, a whole article on LinkedIn saying that uh, I'm fed up with this uh, fiscal polici policies that that if you have a big car and you use it, and then you will get a lot of money back from the state, whereas with your bike you are just oh, okay. Thank you very much. Go on. And nothing, not not a single euro. Yeah. It, it it tried to change, but it's really hard. And I think it, on this way, the lobbying are back to to say that oh my God, it will cost a lot. No, it will not cost a lot. And it will cost a lot if you uh, replace all uh, current thermic uh, cars by electric cars. I mean, okay, they will pollute less uh, directly uh, into your lungs, but uh, they will take up enough space, the same mm. amount of space as the current cars do. They will uh, r drive at the same speed, so the same danger. They will uh, you know, still fill up the cities. And there are more and more people moving to the city. I mean, we have a densification going on. Uh, every year in the Paris region, there are 70,000 uh, homes that are built. Uh, where are all these people going to move? If already now the streets are clogged, the, the, the reason is that uh, there, there's not enough alternatives. 
And now the bike is really starting to become this alternative. And as soon as this network will be finished, and you know the Paris associations, they're also, they're also preparing a more um, uh, a double network of the metro. They're trying to double, they want to double the metro network by a network of uh, bicycle lanes. When people start discovering that as a way of transportation, with really legible lines that they can see where to go with the names and the distances, you can be sure that people they will use it. And 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 in regards to the these electric scooters, these uh, that you can share uh, that uh, mm. rental services that have popped up around around Paris. Your thoughts on those? That's a that's a big de that's a big debate even in our <coughs> in our uh, uh, in our collective. It's um, well, I think there's something you need to 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 consider. Uh, it, there's a lot of criticism, but I think that many negative things that are said against the, the scooters is actually things that we would like to say against the car but that we don't dare because the car has the status that nobody wants to touch for example that they're too fast that they take up too much space on the sidewalk but the car look at how much space the cars take up that they are dangerous for vulnerable people look how dangerous cars are for vulnerable people so and what is more reasonable for a distance between zero and three thousand meters to take a, a little scooter that weighs 15 kilos or to, to, to use a, a, an engine or a thing that weighs 1,500 kilos with an engine in it that uses uh, um, natural resources that have to come from below, uh, that pollute our planet, that uh, cause an unhealthy lifestyle. I mean, I think we need to make a choice. There was, there were these uh, electric cars that have been mm -hmm. done away mm -hmm. with now in the city of Paris. Nicolas what's Mélan, the, what's the right mix? What's, where should the accent be? Should it be on bicycles, electric bicycles, these little electric scooters, electric vehicles? Yeah, I think when you, when you drive, when you travel in cities, what we should all target is 100% uh, decarbonized transport uh, in 10 years. And when I, in I, 10 years? In 10 years, and this is really possible because you have all the alternative. So when I say decarbonized people, uh, transport, I don't say electric because you can also drive a regular bike or you can walk. It doesn't have to be electric. Um, and what we need to get rid of is cars, whether they're electric or not, actually. Because, um, you know, individual cars, they take too much space. They go too fast to, to, to just transport. Somebody. So even a Tesla is bad? Of course, individual cars. If you go two people in the car, if you do ride sharing, it's fine. All the transport should be electric. One of the biggest problems in Paris is Uber. And, you know, there's only diesel cars. Even the taxis, there, half of them are hybrid vehicles. But the pollution and the congestion from, from Uber is terrific. And what is done about it? Nothing. Uh, what we need to electrify is the bus as well. Mm. Because some bus in Paris, the pollution is terrible. We need to electrify vans. We need to electrify everything except cars, because the cars, we just need to get rid of them. Well, it's interesting because the one argument that comes up a lot is, you know, if you're riding around your bike in a polluted city, how good is that for your, for your health as well? But the authorities, the health ministry, has said that it's actually better to get exercise and to be moving around, even if you're in pollution, than, uh, than not. Because even in your, when you're in your car, those, those uh, you know, polluting particles are getting into your car as well. So as long as you're in the city, you're, you're going to be breathing those things in. But if you're riding a bike, are, you're also going to be... You and I have both experienced it. There, there are days if there is no wind and Paris is in a kind of a bowl it's a, yeah, exactly. where you... Uh, where oh, I know, yeah, and I know it's worse in cities like Grenoble, which are in the Alps mm -hmm. and, and things like this. Mm -hmm. you, the, it's gross. You can actually kind of see the, see the pollution. But apparently, it, I mean, and that's why if, if you're using actually an electric bike, it's even better because you're not ventilating as much. So you're not breathing in as much of these, mm -hmm. these polluting particles. Not breathing it as much, but what the yeah. electric bike? Yeah, uh, I think it's it's a good uh, it's a good solution to to help people. But for example, for for, for me, I, I don't know if if I will keep it. I will see uh, because my my main point with my electric call bike is the light, the light, and the fact as I can look at my phone and so I can go anywhere like like I do to to come here today. So. Uh, I, I don't think it, it's uh, the, the, the main thing people have to think about is also the, the logistics. I, I mean, our goods are transported inside the city because these are th there are not as much solution. You, you cannot uh, take uh, the metro with your uh, sofa on your back. <laughs> so that's not possible. That's not authorized. Uh, but you can go with your kids in the in the metro. You can go in the bus. You can go. There, there is plenty of solutions. 
uh, when I wrote my uh, my book about taxis, uh, there was there is a monopoly about taxis. No, there is not a monopoly about taxis. There is a, there's no monopoly of any kind to travel within the city. There is plenty of way. You can you you have plenty of solutions, and car is the less intelligent one, according to me. <laughs> at least. Yeah, maybe to, to add on this, I agree that when it comes to personal transport, you, you have kind of thousands of solutions. And fair enough. But for this logistics, last mile logistics, there is no solution. Take somebody who does deliveries. Today, you can buy a diesel van or a diesel van or a diesel van. There is no alternative. And that's the biggest problem when you see the growth of e-commerce. Now, everybody gets deliveries from this. So you have a, a lot of increase of pollution from, mm. from those vans and as well from Uber. And this is really where we need to, yeah. to, to, to rectify. I, I mean, I really want to emphasize that there will be so many more people who take the bikes if we get rid, not of all the cars to start with, but at least the most polluting one. Mm. And it's not only the cars. Something we need to rectify is scooters, electric scooters, because the pollution is, is terrible as well. Yeah, because mm. I return home from work on my bicycle at the hour in which they're doing deliveries, those uh, mm. food service ones, mm. uh, the scooters, and you really get a full blast of the, <laughs> of the engine there, which are not always fine-tuned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if people delivered, mm -hmm. I mean, if it's like small deliveries on bikes, you know, you see that in, in Copenhagen, people are mm. always, uh, you know, moving, moving around. You were mentioning that if, instead of having food trucks, you had food bikes that would, mm. you know, make a difference. Mm. Or, or people in Copenhagen move Instead of renting a van, they'll just move on their on their bike because mm -hmm. they have these special bikes that you can transport heavy things mm -hmm. with. So. I think these ideas uh, that you mentioned they they start growing when you create the conditions for it, and I think that that's what mm -hmm. politicians are doing now today. I think that's what people want. When you talk to them about bicycles, uh, you see shining eyes. Mm -hmm. The people they, they they get happy imme immediately because they it's like they're you know they're talking about their childhood, but actually they're talking about an extremely efficient way of uh, getting around. And, uh, well, the most important thing is many countries have shown that it works. So why wouldn't it work here? All right. That brings us to politics. In March, there's mm -hmm. going to be uh, municipal elections across France. Mm -hmm. And uh, even before the French capital won the bid to host the 2024 Olympics, regional authorities started work on the project known as Le Grand Paris, the Greater Paris. So it's not just the cities, but all of the surrounding, not just the capital, it's all the surrounding ones. Um, and of the metropolitan area there uh, with uh, the digging of new suburban rail, tramway, metro lines. And so yeah, there you have it, the incumbent mayor, Anne Hidalgo, pleading for understanding to her constituents during the roadworks to build the bike lanes. I want to thank Parisians for their patience and to tell them that it's always very difficult. It's almost like after you've had construction done in your home. You have to spend the time to put everything back in place even after it's finished. So that's what we're doing now. Is that going to be enough, though, to get her re-elected, Florence Vimina? That's what she's gambling on, for, for sure. I mean, lots of her politics for, you know, transport at least, have been about pushing for, car, for, pushing for bikes, rather, trying to get cars out of Paris. But what's interesting about Annie Ledgo is either you love her or you hate her or you love to hate her. Um, mm -hmm. She's a very polarizing figure. People who ride their bikes love all the transformations that have happened in the capital. If that's going to be enough to get her re-elected, I don't know, of course, the uh, the politics of the capital are a lot more complex than just the uh, the transport issue mm -hmm. one. But certainly, um, it, you know, the, the elections are coming up and all these, uh, we're starting to see the changes finally, because it's true that fr Paris has been this massive construction site for, for months, for almost mm -hmm. years now, and finally it seems like things are starting to, mm -hmm. to work. Uh, so certainly people are starting to see, you know, that she had a plan this whole time and it wasn't just about, you know, stopping people from getting around. And she's, let, let's just give a, uh, this po important detail for our mm. viewers. She's from the wrong political party. She's not from the party of the president who mm. won a, by a landslide in the capital during the presidential election. Mm. How much of a, of a factor will the building of these bike lanes be when people cast their ballots mm. in March? I really don't know, but I think, as you said, you said it, they, they love her or they hate her. And I, for, from my point of view, I'm very happy not to have to choice uh, because I'm not living in Paris anymore. But uh, it, it will be very interesting because uh, if it, she, she's on this green side, and but the green are also uh, the Green Party is also having a candidate, uh, David Belliard. So uh, we will see what will uh, what, what will happen because I, I think nobody knows. It's it, it's really. 
it's really a mess right now. But to, to her advantage, the, the ruling so the, the party of Emmanuel Macron has one candidate, but yeah. uh, there's actually another candidate. There's a dissident the candidate yeah, yeah. as well. So, so it's, 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 a complica- it's going to be a complicated mm. election. It's going to be a complicated election, mm. never, uh, all to play for. Uh, Nicolas Mélan, again, there was this criticism that at the outset, there wasn't this holistic approach to transport, bringing in together mm. those who live in the suburbs, those who live in the capital. And, and perhaps a cautionary tale for people watching us in other cities around the mm. world. How do you get it right when you're doing this painful transition, right, of changing people's habits and such and getting them to sell their car and... Well, you know, you have to, to find solution for everybody. Um, I was when you, you mentioned the Grand Paris, this project, which is probably more than 50 billion euros investment. Mm-hmm. If you look how many cars are going to be dipla- displaced, it's very, very, very limited. It's mostly rebound, uh, rebound, rebound effects. Sorry. Take those systems. Really, even with the building of new uh, suburban be, rail it's and gonna be limited. tramways. It's, those and people who live next to the station, the real estate price are going to increase. Good for them. But in terms of uh, addressing the, the, the transport issues, my bet it's going to be very limited. Mm-hmm. And, and imagine you take the 60 billion and you build an mm-hmm. RERV, a bike network. This, you, you, you provide a real solution. There, you displace cars because people leave their car. And, and you don't even need 60 billion. I'm not sure. If Can you, you price, do both? Well, I, 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 wish, uh, I wish probably because you don't need another 60 billion. But the first step would have been the bike. And then, and then we can see what's missing. But today, I think we, I mean, this Grand Paris, to be honest, um, I'm, I'm very skeptical about the impact on the traffic it will have, on the pollution, on the displacement. And the studies I've read, it's maybe two, three percent. So it would be 80 percent car would go to 78 percent. Mm. It's not enough. If I can put a figure on the table, because I agree very much with what you mm. uh, both uh, just said. Uh, I think that the numbers are that if this uh, network is finished, it will uh, move 2.3 uh, million people per day. But every day in the region of uh, the Grand pa- region of Paris, there are 16 million movements uh, by car, and half of them, 8 million, are shorter than 3,000 meters. That means 12 minutes by bike. So can you imagine, so with just a couple of, uh, with a network of bicycle lanes, it would cost maybe hundreds. So, so tell us, how far have you gotten so far in, in, in with your campaign for this, this bike lane? It's working fantastically. Uh, the politicians from all sides, they, they start buying it. They want it. They want the And how much will it. it cost compared to the 60 billion figure that Nicolas was touting? We will talk about that uh, in uh, January when we will uh, unveil it in a press conference uh, because, you know, we're preparing the numbers uh, right now. Uh, but it, it's nothing compared to the Grand Paris Express. I mean, it's just, it's peanuts if you compare it to uh, this type of uh, heavy infrastructure. And it's interesting because with this heavy infrastructure, it transports a lot less people than, uh, than, than, than simple bicycle lanes. Just a simple bicycle lanes, people, they don't realize that naturally, you transport seven times more people than on a car lane, seven times more people. But as people don't consider it naturally as a transport system, they say, well, you, you, you're not going to get rid of one car lane uh, if, the, if the streets are already clogged. But if you would do so, you would transform a lot of car drivers into cyclists and you would free the roads of this, uh, this excess of traffic. Okay, so what, let me give you another example, which has mm-hmm. it's been going on for years, the eastern French city of Strasbourg. Yeah. They are the most bike-friendly city in all of France, and they have a big problem with pollution that sits. Mm-hmm. For years, they've been saying it's because the cars, there, there isn't, uh, and there's a big argument over whether or not to build a ring road. Mm. Take the cars mm. out of the city and put them on the ring road. And environmentalists are squarely divided, with some saying that would be great, it would mean less congestion in town, and others saying, no, you're just going to encourage more people to use their cars. What do you do? Um, what, that depends on how big these roads are. I mean, if you make them very large, you will, you're going to attract uh, a lot of traffic. Cars that would have chosen another road in a, without that huge ring, when they see a big ring, they will be attracted by that ring like a, like a magnet attracts iron. I mean, that's how it works. If you keep it small, then cars, they, w- they, they will not go on, uh, on it that, that easily. That's what they did in the Netherlands. They, 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 they moved the cars, they, they diverted the cars to the roads around the city so that they could no longer cross the city, so that the city could become a nice place to live, 
a safe place to get around on a bicycle, uh, by foot, uh, you know, as, a, as somebody who go, who, who's going to do some shopping. So it is a system that could work uh, if, you, if you don't make the, the, the roads uh, too, too, uh, too wide. Final question, Marie Xavier Vauquier. Mm -hmm. We talk about uh, people who get, and people around the table mm -hmm. here are, are are all examples of it. Uh, people who uh, go to work now using bicycles. Mm -hmm. There's even a, a hashtag, right? Mm -hmm. It's velotaf. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, velotaf means uh, it's a slangy way mm -hmm. of saying work, yeah. bike to work. Bike right? to work. Yeah. Um, Commuting by bike, can't I? But you get the sense when you go on that hashtag and you read yeah. the, the comments in yeah. French. It's kind of tribal, right? Mm -hmm. It's us I, versus I, them. It, it's uh, it's really. Uh, it's not it, that well known, no. Uh, it, it, it's interesting because then you you find a world community that is here to help you. For example, I was wondering what kind of uh, what was it? What kind of bag I needed to have because I was thinking that the backpack was not a, a, a backpack was not a good idea. And so then there was I, I had like twenty comments saying that uh, oh this uh, this sort is is okay this one is okay. But it but isn't a further a source of division. Bike cyclists versus motorists. Cyclists versus. Uh, it, it's uh, the thing with uh, something like Twitter is like you. You, you get the information from what you're interested in. So, so sometimes, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, I was thinking like, oh my God, I should maybe follow some people who are really against our four cars <laughs> to see what they are saying. Because yes, sometimes they are feeling like uh, assaulted by, by, by bikes, but you are like, but say thank you to me because I give you more space to drive. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm an advantage to you. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not someone to, to be blamed for. I guess everyone can kind of be in their yeah. bubble if you're mm. if you're on that kind of yeah. thing. Are but the French mm. div like divided? Is this like a big? I think things are changing. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I get the impression that more and more people are, are tempted mm. by the bikes, and I think it's. I mean, if you're sure, there are going to be some diehard people who ride their bicycles and mm. people, diehard people mm. who want to keep their cars. Mm. But I think it's a little bit more more flexible than that. Mm. Things are. I think things are ch changing. Mentalities are changing. People are trying things out. You were talking about those little scooters that zip around town. Mm. You know, how long will those last? They're also quite polluting because of their battery system. You know, I think, I think we're in a, a, a moment where people are testing a lot of things out. Testing mm. a lot of things out. The mm. French becoming more moderate. <laughs> That'll be our final <laughs> thought. I want to thank you, Florence Filmino. I want to thank as well uh, Stein van Osteren, Nicolas Melan. I also want to thank uh, Marie Xavier Vauquier. Thank you for joining us here for this special year end edition of the France 24 debate cycle safe.